grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome once again to Forest Presbyterian Church Online. Uh, we are, are glad that you're here with us. No matter uh, who you are, no matter how you got here, you are part of this community today. And we're thankful that, uh, that God's brought you here uh, to worship with us uh, and to pray with us today. Um, just to give you a couple of announcements uh, for our, our church and for the life of our church, uh, the first thing is we have uh, Vanco uh, offering um, available online now. Uh, you can go to our website and uh, give online through Vanco. So if you are wondering about that, we've been trying to set this up for a year. We've been in the process of doing that, and it is online, and it is live now, and you're more than welcome to, to give that way. You can also uh, continue to mail checks uh, to the church as your, as your offering. Um, and then when we worship again, obviously we will uh, pass the plates or at least hold the plates at the back of the uh, sanctuary for people going out. Um, so all three are available. We're simply uh, adding one more way for you to give. I know that many people are away, not just, not just now, uh, but oftentimes you're on vacation or something, and this is a way for you uh, to give. And so uh, we want to make that as easy as possible, and uh, now's as good a time as any to start that. Also, uh, there continues to be uh, online devotionals that we are, are um, making available to you throughout Lent. Uh, if you, uh, you want to receive those by email, I think the easiest way to do that would be to go to Facebook and, um, and read it on, on our Facebook page. It's always posted to Facebook, but then you can also, on that, uh, there should be a way for you to add your um, name to that email, or you can always contact the church office and we will add you to that. Moving forward, we don't know exactly uh, when we'll be back in worship. Um, hopefully, it'll just be these, these two Sundays, uh, but we will make that decision by Thursday. This is, as you know in your life, uh, this is kind of a, a moving target right now, and we need to be flexible and open to what it uh, might mean uh, going forward. So we are, are um, going to be flexible as well. Uh, please keep safe and, and do everything you, you, you can to keep others safe. If you need something, you can always contact me at uh, prayer at forestchurch.org. That email goes to me and to the office uh, so that we, uh, if you have a need, uh, you can, um, can, we can, we can uh, try to deal with that as best we can in these, uh, in these times. Uh, but we, we do want you to know that we're still, we still want to be in touch with you um, and we want to know um, if you're having some kind of problem during this, during this season. Um, so... Again, we're here to, to worship now and to, to give thanks to God for everything that everyone has been, um, been doing in this, in this season, but also for keeping us safe. Um, this is uh, David weekend in the lectionary. This is the weekend in the lectionary where Psalm 23 uh, is in the reading. Uh, and I think it's appropriate that we begin our uh, service today by uh, praying this prayer together, if you would just open your scripture, uh, I'm going to be reading from the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, um, but any, any version is, is, well, many of you probably have learned it in the King James Version or something. Um, so say it along with me. This is, a, this is a great prayer for this kind of season that we are in. Uh, so let's, uh, let's pray this uh, Psalm 23 together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Truly goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Our second scripture this morning is from uh, 1 Samuel 16. We don't often read from 1 Samuel. It's, it's not the, the first book that we think of when we think of the scriptures. It's not the first uh, place that we go to, but it is uh, a great story. Um, and it is uh, appropriate on this day when we hear about uh, King David. So let's, let's read the story of David's anointing. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? You've rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself 
a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Many of you may have had the experience in grade school or in middle school of having played kickball in the yard at the school, in the playground. And two captains were chosen and then from the group assembled there, people were chosen for the team. You may have had the experience of being the first person chosen. You were stronger, bigger, faster than everybody else in your school. You were picked first. Maybe you had a little different experience, and maybe it's kind of hurt you over the years. Maybe you were picked last. Maybe you weren't as fast as the other kids. Maybe you weren't as skilled. Maybe you just didn't fit in. You were picked last, and it it hurt. It really hurt. Well, our story about uh, David today is about someone being picked and how God doesn't pick the way that we pick. You see, in ancient Israel, they wanted a king, and so when they picked a king, they picked Saul. And Saul would have made a great king. According to our eyes, he was bigger than everybody else, was stronger than everybody else, was a charismatic guy. But Saul had a lot of problems. Saul was disobedient to the Lord and did not wait on Samuel to make a sacrifice before battle. He was a bit of a rageaholic. He was angry. And it just got worse and worse from there. When the people picked, they picked someone who was a head taller than everybody else. And God picked who was a little different. As they went through the lineup of David's brothers, they went from the largest, the oldest, the most charismatic, down all the way to the youngest, the smallest, the one who was out keeping the sheep. God picked that one. After all these years of being tossed around, by his older brothers, probably beaten up. Now, God chooses David. David had a lot of good qualities, and the main quality that was good in David was his heart. 
Because when God looks at us, God can see through all the external things, our size, our speed, our quickness. There's a new term they use now, athleticism, our charisma. God can see through all of that and sees on the most inward part, as the scripture says here. God looks on the deepest part of who we are, and God can see through all the facade, through everything, to, the, to get to the most inward part. David was a man after God's own heart. We can be people after God's own heart. If we seek what the Lord seeks, with our will, with our mind, with our bodies. For David, David's very name means love, desire, passion. David had a passion for God. Think about the Psalms. and the Psalm that we just read in Psalm 23, David is passionate about God. David loves the Lord and wants to follow the Lord into all situations. Many have said that the Psalms are different from other scriptures. Athanasius, the theologian, said, the rest of the scriptures speak to us. The Psalms speak for us. The very desires of our hearts, when we are depressed, when we are up, when we are down, we struggle. These are the ways that the Psalms speak to each of us. That's why they've connected with so many people for so many centuries. This is the good part of David's leadership. There were also bad things that David did. David wasn't perfect. That's why I don't want to mislead you and think that God picks perfect people. David wasn't perfect. David made a lot of mistakes. His relationship with Bathsheba as king being number one on the list. He murdered Bathsheba's husband and then took her for his own. David fought with his sons and struggled over the kingdom. In many ways, David was a good king. In some ways, he was bad. David wasn't perfect, but God used David. In the same way, God uses us. We're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But God still uses us and needs us from day to day. And we can become more and more obedient to the Lord every day. We can make our heart, our desires, more and more in line with God's desires for justice, peace, love, and mercy every day. There are many things that are going to happen to David between becoming anointed to be king and becoming king. David is going to fight Goliath very soon in the scriptures. What's David's strategy for dealing with that? David can't even really fit into Saul's armor. You would think they would send out someone equally big to fight Goliath. David has a different strategy, a surprising strategy, because he picks out five smooth stones to deal with the evil of Goliath. Because that's what Goliath really stands for in this story, is the kind of evils that we face in the world and how relying on the Lord in the midst of that can be the way out. We've had to rely on five smooth stones in the midst of this virus that has been among us and is growing in our midst. It's a natural evil. It's not the kind of evil you can necessarily fight with the biggest person, the strongest and smartest. Instead, sometimes the way you fight this disease, to fight the coronavirus, is to do nothing. That's counterintuitive. But it's the way that God's called us to fight against that. I'm very proud of the way that members of this congregation have checked on one another and have looked into how each other is doing, to pray for one another, and to care for one another. 
A group from this congregation went to Bedford Christian Ministries on Friday to hand out meals. They did so in a way that was socially distanced, but also in a way that recognized their needs in this community that simply cannot go by the wayside. People must eat. The hungry must be fed. There are opportunities for us from day to day in spite of this disease. We are part of God's community, and God's called us together to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. We can do that even when we are disconnected. We can do that even when we are connected together only through the computer. This is a time of testing us to be away from one another, to make us thankful for the times that community is together. We have this time apart, and God can show us ways to be thankful when we're back together, to never take that for granted again. But those are moments to cherish and be thankful for. Those same psalms that David speaks of in, Psalm, in the Psalms he talks about the beard of Aaron about how the oil is running down the beard of Aaron this leads us to the other thing about David as God's anointed David is the one that is chosen by God Many times we hear a word used in the Old Testament and then used another way, and we don't realize it's the same word all the way through. The word anointed, Messiah, and Christ are all the same word. So the connection between the Old Testament and the New and in our life together is there. Just as Aaron, the priest, was anointed with oil to have oil run down his face, David is anointed here to be the one who will be king. Just as Christ is God's anointed. The word Messiah is the same for anointed, and the word Christ is the word for anointed. As Christians, we are those who are anointed together with Christ and anointed in him. God has called us together as this community to be the community of God's anointed. And God hasn't chosen us because of our strength and our power. God has chosen us for our faith and our obedience to show love and mercy to this world. We don't have to act like the world works. We can act like God wants us to work and be and do and live. So in the midst of this struggle, call to mind the words that David uses in Psalm 23. This is the kind of faithfulness that David had. This is his other smooth stone. He says the Lord is his shepherd. David trusts in the Lord for everything. When David went astray is the times that he didn't. We must put in dark days like these, put our trust completely in the Lord. The Lord is our shepherd, and we won't want for anything. If he's our shepherd. God takes us through the valley of the shadow of death, through all the dark times of life, and leads us to still waters. In the presence of this disease, God prepares a table before us. The presence of our enemy. And throughout our life, to trust in the Lord, is what makes our cup overflow. Be thankful in these days, the times when the Lord has, is, and will make your cup overflow. And to continue to trust in the Lord throughout all the darkness. There are those who are going to get sick in our community and in our world. We can slow that down and have faith in the Lord to guide us and lead us through this. We can have faith in the Lord that the Lord is going to walk us from one side of this to the other. So may the Lord continue to walk with you 
May the Lord continue to call you one of his anointed and to feel the Lord's presence from day to day. I want to close today with the final uh, lectionary scripture, which is from Ephesians 5. There's light in the darkness. The darkness does not overcome it, as the Gospel of John says. And it's the same here. Hear these words from Paul in Ephesians. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. After our scripture today, another translation of that. Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and God's anointed will shine on you because you are anointed in him. Let us pray. Merciful and powerful God, walk beside us. Lead us to the still waters. For you're there, your rod and your staff, they protect us and guide us. May we trust in you and everything. And may we have hearts that desire you. May we set our very hearts on the things that you desire. May we hear you and obey you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God bless. Have a great week. Stay safe. And if you need anything, please feel